enzymes are little miracle pockets found in every corner of the world. They are our life support systems, bakers, brewers, factory workers and more. Yet, they are often neglected and their abilities are underrated. I believe that because enzymes are becoming of an increased importance in the modern world, hopefully what I'm going to share about enzymes will be useful in understanding the way biochemists look at an enzyme and how enzymes can contribute to New Zealand's industry using the concept called enzyme engineering. So to begin with, what is an enzyme? Enzymes are proteins that drive chemical reactions in our body. And they have a certain specific shape in order to carry out that function. These enzymes are critically responsible in life processes. And an experiment has shown that just the absence in a single enzyme causes DNA synthesis to take 78 million years. You may ask, why is this important? Well, DNA synthesis occurs when our body needs to. Cells need to divide and grow. Therefore, without that enzyme around, we wouldn't exist as we are. The speeds of enzymes are incredible. It has been shown that a substrate in our body takes 2.3 billion years to break down. However, with that enzyme around, it closes that gap into milliseconds. In fact, every chemical reaction that happens in the body has to rely on enzymes, notably respiration, detoxification, and digestion. So what I'm trying to say is that enzymes are not Pac-Man. <laughs> so how does an enzyme work? Um, an enzyme the enzyme here, shown in green, has to bind to what is known as the substrates. So upon binding to it, it forms what is known as the transition state over there. And that is where the action happens, where the substrates, which are raw material that can be converted into useful products, are transformed into the products, as you can see on the third picture. <clears throat> as you can see now that A is bound to B and C is separated. And I would like to draw your attention again that it has to have a specific shape in order to bind to the substrates in order to carry out that reaction. Now, I would like to switch gears for what enzymes can do in our body and take it into the industry. In other words, we take the biological capabilities of the enzyme in our body and integrate it into industry. And you might be thinking, why is this important? As I've said before, if it's, it's able to carry out chemical reactions and drive them so quickly, there should be more that can be done in that area. Furthermore, although an enzyme has to be extremely specific in order to carry out its um, function, what, in the industry setting, there are a few reasons as to why enzyme engineering comes into play. The first reason is that out of the many combinations for building an enzyme, nature picks only one. Number two is that the enzymes in our body that we use in the industry are compatible with our body, but it doesn't mean that they are 100% effective in an industrial setting. So enzyme engineering was born from that logical reasoning. And what it does is it focuses on producing biocatalysts or enzymes that will create a better yield and drive chemical reactions. So one, what are the key enzymes used in an industry? First of all, we have the lacases, which is really, really intimidating, but this is how it looks like when it's visualized by a biochemist. What lacases do in nature is that it takes the oxygen in the air and it breaks down harmful compounds. And the same approach that it does in nature can be taken to the industry. It's called bleaching. It takes the oxygen, combines it with colored dyes, and breaks it down. However, there are limitations to what this enzyme can do. First of all, it is only able to work in acidic conditions. Oh, hang on. Yep, acidic conditions, which fall from 6 to 0. But textile waste waters fall, be, fall among the 7 to 14 range. So as you can see, there are two different extremes. And this becomes a problem because enzymes are only able to work in a certain set of conditions imposed on them. So what came out of enzyme engineering was that researchers in Illinois identified an enzyme that was able to function in an alkaline solution. 
They then went on to improve it by enzyme engineering. The new variant, called lac 3 t 93 increased, had an increased activity of nearly five times compared to the original enzyme. And in addition to that, it had a better decolorizing activity. So what I'm going to do is explain the generic process of enzyme engineering. But before I go for further, there is something that everyone should know, and that is DNA makes enzymes. So this is important because how the researchers carry out their work has to do with DNA. So the first step is using DNA is to create a genetic library that will produce enzyme variants. We take a DNA sequence and create combinations of different types of DNA to code for us a possible enzyme that can work industrially. These sequences are recorded in a mutant library, or well, a genetic library. And from there, it's used for a reference and a starting point for making these enzymes. So two methods have been done, and this is they are known as screening and selection. The former is preferred as an experiment is able to show that you can screen up to 10 to the power of eight enzymes, which is 100 million of them. And while selection is based on studying the DNA sequences and finding out how the protein folds, how the enzymes fold. These steps are repeated and the best variants are produced and tested against. It is then used to incorporate it into industry and many much more. Now the good news is that with better knowledge of enzymes, the movement towards smarter genetic libraries become possible. The changes we can make are more specific as we are now able to identify many possible slide, si uh, sites. For example, if you look at the enzyme here, you, we can find that we can change maybe a section on the blue ribbon or a section on the red ribbon, which then allow us to make a better enzyme from there. There are also a few more advantages. Recently, there are methods and computer programs that allow us to visualize this enzyme in real time. We are able to look at an enzyme and say, oh, we've got this enzyme here. Now, if we change here, here, and here, what would it look like on the computer? This would increase the better chances, would better increase the chances of getting the enzyme that we want. And at least five methods have been worked out from 2005 to 2009 and are paving the way for smarter genetic libraries. So why am I talking about enzymes and the industry? I understand that New Zealand depends on exports and the textile industry contributes in no small part to the country's income. Using enzymes as a tool to improve the quality of the material such as dyes, and with a better and increased yield in goods, will cut down significant time. Furthermore, because the global market out there is increasingly competitive, the need for increasing the quality and rate of production is just one of the many challenges that will need to be overcome in order to increase the country's economy and further its business standing in the world. Now, I won't kid you and say that enzyme engineering is all easy. It's laborious work. However, the payoffs are high. If researchers in Illinois are able to identify an enzyme that can produce up to five times better, yield, better product and at a faster rate, the possibilities are endless.